Alright, so today guys, you're watching a video about circles. Circles, yes, like in geometry. Um, we are starting a new unit which deals with conics, which are different, um, uh, different figures that are created from circles. And so today you're going to be able to determine the equation of a circle from the graph, from two sets of points, and the radius in standard form. And so uh, some new vocabulary, which really shouldn't be new, are going to be circle, center, and radius. Alright? So, let's start off with the standard forms of the equation of a circle. Okay? Those standard forms include uh, the one where the center is 0, 0, which is in the form of x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And the radius is r, of course. Okay, so this is the general makeup for a circle. It should, should not look new. It should look very familiar from when we just finished up uh, polar coordinates. Now, this might be something that you don't might not remember from geometry, but this is also the standard form of an equation where the center is not at the origin. The center is at the value of h, k. h and k representing some, uh, some integer value. Okay, but the setup is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, and of course your radius is r. Those are your two different ways to write the equation of a circle in standard form. So we're going to be doing some practice with that today. All right. We're going to first skip over these uh, first few examples uh, that deal with uh, word problems. But basically, once you get the general idea of uh, how to write the equation of a circle, then you'll, uh, then you'll be able to do the word problems with no, with, without any issue. So we're first going to start with writing the equation for this graph in its own your notes. OK? So the first thing you basically want to do is you need to recognize, OK, hey, my center is located right there at 0, 3, okay? And then there's a point that's on my circle at 7, 3, and this segment right here represents the radius. Well, I can pretty much just take my standard form of a circle, which is x minus h squared plus y minus k, k squared equals r squared, and then plug in what I know. Now, from the graph, we really can just see that the radius is the radius is just 7, because it's a horizontal line we can just count straight across. But this method right here that you see, it's going to be helpful when you're given a center and you're given a point that's on the circle, and it's like a diagonal line. So this is going to be helpful for that. So basically what you do is you plug in the values for x and y and for h and k. h and k represent your center, so there it is. There's 0, and there's 3, and then x and y represent the x and y coordinate of the point that's on the circle. And so basically you plug it in. You simplify, you get 7 squared plus 0 squared equals r squared. And so you find out that your radius squared for the formula is going to be 49, making your radius 7. But you got to square it for the equation. So, again, there's your standard form. You plug in your points. You simplify. And then you find out that r squared equals 49. So then your equation of the circle is going to be x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 49. Now some of you guys may, might think and might ask, well, can I write it as x minus 0 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 49? And yes, you certainly can, okay? But do also realize that x minus 0 is nothing but x. So that's why there's the x squared there, okay? So now what I want you to do is I want you to take this next example, try this one on your own. You're going to write the equation for this graph. And what I really want you guys to try to do is work it all out. Do all the work first without using the answers to try to figure out, okay, well, that's the answer. Because not every question is going to be multiple choice, okay? So I want you guys to pause this video and work this out. And then when you're ready to see the answer, press play on the video. So pause the video. All right. So hopefully you... Uh, you went through the process and you set it up using standard form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, and you plugged in your information. You plugged in 14 for x and 6 for y, and you plugged in 6 for h and 14 for k, because that represents your center, h and k. Did a little bit of math, uh, 14 minus 6 is 8 squared. Uh, 6 minus 14 is going to be a negative a squared equals r squared. a squared is 64. And then negative a squared is 64 equals r squared. That represents a total of 128. And I believe, 
Oh yes, I did make a mistake. Ooh, I made a horrible mistake. Okay, let me fix this. Hopefully you guys see where my mistake was. I plugged in the exact same point for my H and my K. So let me fix this. I should have plugged in zero for the X coordinate of uh, my center and six for the Y coordinate of my center. So zero for H and six for K. I even labeled it and I put it down wrong. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you have this, the 14 squared is 196 plus zero. So R squared is equal to 196. And that's pretty much what you needed to write your equation. You know your centers at zero, six. So then when you put, plug it into your standard form, you get X minus zero squared plus Y minus six squared equals 169. So that meant that your answer should have been Okay, so please forgive me for making that, that error. I mean, hey, I am human. It does happen. Let's take a look at this one. We're going to write an equation of the circle if the endpoints of the diameter are 2, 8, and then 2, negative 2. So remember, the diameter goes straight across the center of the circle. Okay, so if you have, so if you have a circle in the center, the diameter goes straight through. Okay, so it's basically telling you that you have a one endpoint at two eight and the other one at two negative two. Probably should know the other one because that's possible. Okay? So that's basically what this looks like. Now in order to figure out the equation of the circle, you need two things. You need to know where the center is located, which you don't have, and you need to find the length of your radius. So to find the center, you have to do old school midpoint formula from your geometry days of x2, uh, x1 plus x2 over 2, and then y1 plus y2 over 2. Because you can find that center point, that, that midpoint, you have found the center of your circle. So you plug in your 2s for your x's, 8 and negative 2 for your y's, and you simplify. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 8 plus a negative 2 is 6. When you simplify them, you get 2, 3. 2, 3 represents the center of your circle. Okay, it represents the center of your circle. Now you have to find the radius, okay? You have to use old school distance formula, okay? Well, the distance between your center and any point that's on your circle, okay? As you see here, we used one of the points that was on the circle, and this here was the center. If you use the distance formula, which is nothing but basically finding the radius, Okay, using like the standard form, plugging it in. Doing a little bit of math, you get zero squared plus a negative five squared, which is just the square root of 25, or five. That equals the radius of your circle. So if the radius is five, then you know that r squared is 25. So basically from here, you could have just squared this and got your answer. Because remember the formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So if you figure out what r is, you just so now that you know r, or more specifically r squared, and you know h and k, which were the center of your circle, you can now write it in standard form. So again, it'll be right there. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 25. So we plugged in 2 for h, 3 for k, and then r squared was 25. Now, if your center was had a negative in it, okay, say your center was instead 4, negative 1, well, when you go to plug it in into your standard form, yes, that minus that's in standard form is going to end up turning into a plus because two negatives make a positive, okay? So do keep that in mind. We haven't had an example of that yet, but I wanted to make sure you saw that, okay? So I want you to try the next one on your own. Again, don't look, use the solutions to answer your uh, to answer this question, these uh, multiple choice answers, but actually try to work it all the way out. So pause this video and then work it out. So if this is the diameter, that means you need to find the midpoint, which represents the center 
of the circle, okay? So to do the midpoint is the formula x1 plus x2 over 2, and then y1 plus y2 over 2. Well, then that gives you nothing but 6 over 2, and then negative 2 over 2, which tells us that our center is 3, negative 1. Hopefully you guys got that, okay? So that right there represents our h and our k for our equation, all right? Now we have to find the radius. Well, the radius is nothing but the square root using the distance formula, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. All right, I'm going to use my center as x1 and y1, and I'm going to use this point as my x2, y2. So x2 minus x1, I'm going to try to do what I'm messing up, y2 minus y1 squared. That's 0 squared plus 6 squared, which equals the square root of 36, or 6. Which basically lets me know that r squared is going to equal 36. Remember, at any point in time, I'm going too fast, you can pause the video, rewind it, do whatever you need to. So in standard form, it's going to be x minus h, which is a 3, squared, plus y minus k. Now, a minus a negative 1 turns into a positive, and then r squared. So hopefully, if you did it right, you should have got for your answer. To find the equation of the circle between those two points that represent the diameter is a. Now we're going to find the center and radius of the graph with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 16. Now if there's no h and there's no k in this problem, then that basically means that your center is located at 0, 0. And remember, your radius is nothing but, like if this equals r squared in the general formula, then it's just the square root of that. Not plus or minus, just the positive version. Okay? So, the center is going to be located at 0, 0, and the radius is at 4. Now, this particular slideshow, this is probably the one thing I don't like about this slideshow, but I wanted to use it just because, uh, you know, hey, hey, it was already created. Um, but this part right here about making a table, you don't have to worry about, okay? This is how you draw, a, like, a very specific circle, okay? But the way that I taught when I taught circles in geometry was very simple. If I know where the center is and I know what the radius is, well, when it comes down to actually graphing the circle, I plot the center. And then from the center, I go four to the left, four to the right, four up and four down from the center, and I just connect the points to form my circle. And the reason why it's four is because that's the radius. So if the radius was three, I go three to the left, three to the right, three up, three down. Okay, so whatever the radius is, you just go up, right, left, and down. So I'm forgetting about all these extra points. I am just going to take a look at the center and the radius and graph this, okay? So again, I'm ignoring this. And I'm just looking at the center and the radius. So I plot the center. I go forward to the left, forward to the right, I know that was backwards, right and left, doesn't really matter. I gotta go both ways. Up and then down, and then I do my best to draw a smooth circle through those points. I'm not gonna judge you on how perfect your circle is, but I do need to see that it hits four left, four right, four up, and four down. Okay? So now I want you to try this with the next example. Okay? The next example. And it is a mistype in your notes, guys, so please make sure you make the correction on the U-Try problem. It should say x squared plus y squared equals 9. Please make that change in your notes. It should say 9, not 16. I want you to pause the video. I want you to find the center, find the radius, and then graph the circle. So pause this video and do that. Hopefully you guys gave this a try and you saw that the center, since there was no H and no K, it let you know that it was 0, 0. So that eliminated uh, C and D, even though you shouldn't be using these. I'm just giving you guys a heads up. So the center was 0, 0, and the radius was 3, because 9 equals R squared, so R equals 3. So that means that when you graph this, you're going to go 3 to the left, 3 to the right, 3 up, and 3 down from the center. 
Okay? Three left, three right, three up, three down, connect all the points. Even if the center wasn't at zero, zero, you still go through the same process. So say instead the center was at uh, say the center was at two zero, but the radius was still three. Okay? Well, I'm still gonna go three to the left, three to the right, three up, and three down from the circle, or from the center, I mean, and I'm still gonna draw a circle to connect all the points. See, not even my circles are perfect, but you can tell that my radius is consistent all the way around. Last little bit of notes, and this is where the stuff from uh, the video that you watched on the concept that you need to know for the, this next unit of completing the square, this is where this comes into play. And we're gonna see this a lot more when we look at the other conic sections um, in this new unit. So we're gonna find the center and the radius of the circle with the equation x squared plus y squared plus x, 6x minus seven equals zero. Then we're gonna graph the circle because then we'll know the center and the radius. So the thing that you want to do is you want to complete the square. And when you complete the square, you need to put your x's together and your y's together. And yes, they're going to be on the same side. Your constant, okay, your constant is the problem, which is your negative 7 needs to be on the other side, so you need to start by adding that to both sides. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to complete the square. So you're going to put your 6x right beside your x squared. You're gonna move your seven to the other side, and now you're gonna complete the square, okay? So this is what you need to do. Remember, completing the square, you have to take half of b and square it. And we're gonna look at each one in its own entity, okay? So we're gonna look at this, this part right here, this first part is x squared plus six, x plus the square, and then we'll do a y squared later. So b is six, we take half of six, which is three, and then we square it. So the number that we're gonna to add to both sides, because remember, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other, is nine. So we're gonna add nine to both sides. Now, we don't have to do that for y because there's not an additional term. If there was an additional term, say like there was a three x there, then we would have to complete the square again and then add it to the other side, just like how we did with the x's, okay? So, once we complete the square, we'll fill in the squares, and then we factor. x squared plus 6x plus 3 is basically the perfect, uh, the perfect square trinomial of x plus 3 squared. y gets brought down, and 7 plus 9 equals 16. And if you notice, this is standard form for a circle. So by, put, by completing the square, we put it in standard form, allowing us to find the center and the radius, so that way we can graph this circle. So again, we complete the square, by basically putting the x's together and the y's together and moving the constants to the other side. We take half of b, square it, and add it to both sides. Then we factor, and then simplify to get x, square, x plus three squared plus y squared equals 16, making our center at negative three, zero, and our radius, the square root of 16, which is four. Again, remember, standard form is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. In order for that negative in standard form to turn to a positive, the h had to be negative. That x coordinate of the center had to be negative. And since there was no additional plus anything or minus anything, that lets us know that the y coordinate of the center, the k, was zero. 16, we take the square root of that and we get four, okay? So when we're graphing this, all right, just checking to make sure I'm still recording. So when we graph this, we go over to negative three, zero, we plot the center, we go four to the left, four to the right, four up, four down, and we connect to form our circle. All right? You got one more example. Uh, you're gonna try this one on your own, so pause the video. And when you are ready to see the answer, I want you to work it all the way out. Once you find the answer, um, press play. So hopefully you started with grouping the x's together, okay, and leaving the box there, and then grouping the y's together. All right? On the other side, oh, I didn't give myself enough space, hold on. Let me try this again, I need a little bit more space. OK, 
Okay? So, this time, unlike the other example, we're going to have to complete the square twice. So we're going to take this B, which is 8. We're going to take half, hopefully that 4, and then you squared it to get 16. So you're going to add 16 to both sides. That's by taking half of B and then squaring it for your X's. You do the same thing. You do the same thing with your Y's. Your B is a negative 4, so you're going to take negative 4 and half of that is going to be a negative 2. And then you square it to get a positive 4, and that's what you're going to add to both sides, positive 4. Hopefully you guys got that. Hopefully you're not having any difficulty. Now I'm going to factor the first part, that x squared plus 8x plus 16 turns into x plus 4 squared. <clears throat> then I'm going to group the back side, which is going to be a y minus 2 squared. And just a reminder, I said this in the video from the completing the square concept that you need to know. Whenever you take half of b, that is what's going to be in that parenthesis when you factor it. Works that way every time. Now we just have negative 11 plus 16 plus 4, so that turns into a positive 9. And there is the standard equation of our circle, making our center negative 4, positive 2, and our radius the square root of 9, which is 3. So our answer should have been C if we were looking at the multiple choice, but I remember I want you guys to work this out. And when you graph it, you're going to go to negative 4, 2, you're going to go Right three, left three, up three, down three. So your center gauge should have been negative four, two. Your radius three. When you plot that point, again, left three, right three, up three, down three, connect all the points. And there's everything that you need to know about a circle. Okay? We're going to be doing that completing the square process with um, everything on, this, uh, on that side uh, with X's and Y's throughout this, uh, this particular unit because um, all the other kinds we do with do have some, a similar type of process. So if you're still having difficulty with completing the square, uh, you need to go ahead and make sure that we, we address that as soon as possible. Um, if you guys have any questions, you always can email me. You can ask Rachel. You can talk to me in person. But um, yeah.